Hello and welcome to Enquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you, fellow choir people. Today's video was inspired by recent development in my career. As you probably know, I'm a choir director and we talked about choir conducting here on the channel. A few months ago, I had to undertake a new thing for me, which is conducting my choir while they were performing with an orchestra. It was a huge undertaking for me, and I really had to think about how to do this, because I am used to choir conducting, but handling both at the same time is something very new for me and a whole different ball game. like. If you never tried it. I know I always had respect for conductors in general, but this is like, wow. It's like handling air traffic. After a really long time, I felt like I was just a beginner when it comes to conducting. And I thought a lot about you who were coming to this channel from the video Choir Conducting for Complete Beginners and you asking me how to become more confident. After all the um, theory and all the practicing, there comes a time when you have to stand in front of the whole choir, the whole group of musicians in front of the audience and just do the thing. And it's a completely different feeling because it's real time. The music starts when you start. You have to handle everything. And I wanted to share how I handled that because after a really long time, I felt a really huge pressure and I had to handle it in a way that was very new for me. So I hope you find this video helpful. It's about how to be confident at the stage, at the point of you are the conductor of the performance and you have to do your stuff. So let's start with the video. I wanted to start by saying that performing is a skill, okay? You have many great musicians who you never heard of just because they were never good on the stage. It doesn't come naturally for many people and for those who it actually does come naturally they still have to practice it the worst part of practicing performing and confidence during performance is the fact that the only way you can practice it is if you're already on the stage i have to be honest one of the worst things i have ever heard was oh practice 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 and then you come to the stage and you let the music move you i mean yes to a certain point of course the music moves me and of course i'm making music so i have to let it move me but when you're in charge i have to have some rationality and i would argue that rationality when it comes to performing is really important when it comes to the things you have to do while conducting. That is not an inspiration. You have a technical responsibility. You have to show the sign. You cannot get so involved when it comes to the music that you forget to show someone something. Or you cannot lose yourself in the music and forget all about the tempo. And you cannot go through the music in the same way the audience is going through it and your singers and performers are. I don't know if you know, but by vocation, I'm also an engineer. And in engineering, we have a thing that's called algorithms. An algorithm is a set of specific steps you have to do in order to get something done. The steps are very well defined, but you have to also define the order in which you do those steps. It's really helpful for me while conducting. If I think about it rationally, like it is an algorithm. And I'm not saying that I should lose every emotional connection. No, it's just having that algorithm set in place makes me feel free because I have it analyzed in a way that makes things more simple. I don't have to tackle on this huge amount of a composition of music, of rhythms, of instruments of singers i only have to think about the steps i have set myself for i know what to do 
I know when to do them and I have the algorithm that sequence practice and if I do the sequence well I get to the whole program to work which means the whole performance works if I do this step then I will do this step and then I will do this step and then I will do this step and then one step at a time I will get through the whole performance this takes me to my first instruction. I think it is very important to be able to verbalize what you have to do. Just because you are able to do something, just because you're able to perform something from the beginning to the end, it doesn't mean that you actually know it. Maybe it's just a practice performance without you even knowing what you are actually doing because your muscle memory is so strong that it just can it can just handle everything that happens in sequence. The problem with that kind of a knowledge, when there is no rationality about it, is if something happens during the performance, then your chances of getting lost and not being able to handle a situation that, that's going on are very high. Verbalizing at least certain things you have to do during conducting is something that I found to be really powerful. What I'm talking about is not just, you know, coming to the stage and putting your hands up and up. One, two, three. No. Verbalizing, okay, at the bar eight, I have to show the sopranos what they have to do. And step by step, being able to verbalize makes things a bit more rational. I'm not saying that you should talk to yourself during the whole performance, but just knowing the important steps, there are some cues you have to give. Okay, the moment is coming up. I have to show the altos at this bar. One, two, three. Okay, I will strongly advise you not to depend on the music. That's, I think, very dangerous if you think that everything will happen once the music starts. In some cases, yes, if you analyzed your score so much that you know every single thing. There can be situations when if, if something unusual happens during that music that can totally throw you off your path. I know my steps, I know my sequence, I know my algorithm I, that I have to do, but I also have to make myself feel the music in order to be a better conductor. All I'm saying is you need the balance. And I think it's very dangerous to assume that things will just happen once the music starts. You are in a position of handling everyone. The choir can fall apart. I mean, that's very dangerous, but it's true. You need to be able to handle that situation because certain things will happen every time. You being in control while feeling the music is the aim I think we should go for. One, one very important thing I learned and I noticed that's a sign for me that I'm not feeling confident is I've practiced everything. I know my stuff, but I'm so in the score that I do not look at the performers. I don't look at my choir members. I never raise my head, my eyes to look at them. That shows for me during the performance that I'm scared, that I'm just like focusing on my steps and my rational, okay, scores, like this is here, this is here, okay, I'm here. That shows for me that I'm not feeling confident enough and that I'm not actually handling a situation, that I'm just being a mechanical conductor. During the performance, my performers should be feeling safe in my hands, literally. So I noticed that if I make myself look at them during the rehearsals, I learn how to connect with them while still staying present when it comes to all the things I have to do. I realized that if I just do the steps, if I just do the cues, if I just do the conducting without connecting to them, that's, that's a lost story. It just, it doesn't feel the same. But at the same time, you have to practice that as well. Because once you look at the choir and once you connect with someone from the choir or from the orchestra, you have to find your way back to the score. So that's something you can actually and you have to actually practice.
Of course, the assumption is you have your scores practiced and analyzed so much that you don't have to think about every note. Of course, that's not something you can always achieve because we have so much to do, so much music to analyze that sometimes there are places in the score where you feel less confident, but where you feel practiced enough, you should reach out to the choir or to the orchestra and look at them just to make yourself in control of the situation. Because if for, for me, if I'm just looking at the score, then I'm just, you know, I'm shielding myself from something and that's not something that makes me feel confident. So I have to tackle my fear, however subconscious it is. I have to handle it. I have to confront it right on, head on. This is going to sound really cheesy and I know it's a very YouTube thing to do, but if you know your stuff, if you have rehearsed it, if you know everything you have to do, you know that you can do it and you get scared before the performance, Positive self-talk is something that makes a difference. I think it's very scary that a conductor before the performance tells him or herself, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what will you do? What will I do? What will happen? I cannot handle this. You, you are not practiced enough. How will you do this? I think that's very dangerous because that's an energy you transmit to your people in front of you. So positive self-talk, however bizarre that sounds, I cannot believe I'm, I'm saying that to you, but it's really true that it makes a difference. I'm not saying fake it till you make it because you have to know your stuff. I keep saying that here on the channel, you have to know your stuff and that gives you the most power. But when it comes to stage fright, when it comes to the pressure and the responsibility, saying to yourself, I got this, I can do this, I will do this, I know what I have to do, I know my algorithm, I know my choir, I know the music, and I know myself, I can do this, that makes a difference. And it starts from you. If nobody else believes in you, which is a thing that can happen. If you are a first time conductor and you feel scared, all you can do is practice. And then when it comes to the performance, trust yourself. Don't doubt yourself. And finally, I will strongly argue that you think about your entrance to the stage. I think that makes a really big difference, a really big difference. And I will tell you now why. The choir was already there and the orchestra was already there. And I realized just then that everybody's waiting for me. Of course, I'm aware of that, but I wasn't aware of that until that moment came. And I was like, oh my God, like everybody's waiting just for me. And I will control the whole situation. And for a moment I was like, and then I was like, okay, that's a privilege. And I told myself, I got this. Everybody started applauding. And then the biggest shock of my life happened. The orchestra stood up, which of course is something that's natural. And that I, I saw that happen so many times on the stage, but I wasn't aware that it will happen for me because the choir is always standing. I started walking slowly just to feel the ground and I didn't rush it because I wanted to confront the moment. Letting yourself confront the, the situation in that way gives you more time to adapt because you have to be aware that our instincts to, you know, flee because we are scared are instincts. And if you let your body and your brain and your nerves know that you are in a safe position, then you give it the best chance to handle that situation. So I slowed down a bit and I came to the stage. I shook hands with um, the first violin. I took a bow and I stood up and I looked at the audience because I wanted to give myself knowledge about the surroundings I'm in. This way I showed myself that, okay, this is the audience, you're handling this. And then I switched to my choir and the orchestra and I looked at them. 
And I was like, okay, this is a familiar situation for me. I know my stuff. Okay, the scores are here. I opened the first page. I looked at the orchestra to see if they were ready. I looked at the choir. They were ready. I raised my hand and I thought to myself, okay, this is the first piece. This is the tempo. I have to show the first bar. One, two, take a breath, start. And then the music started. And then it was a combination of getting through the music while giving cues and handling every situation. It is very important to know that things will happen, but I handle them all. And I think the first, the, the impact of that entrance for me was something that made a huge difference. Because if the first information that I gave to, to myself, to my brain, and to my emotional state was, oh my God, it's so scary. Oh my God, just go through it. Da, 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 da. No, just ground yourself, feel it, confront it, and it, it will give you a better chance, in my opinion. When it comes to music in general, I think of it as being a huge rehearsal space for life because when you start playing something, uh, a score when you start the music you just you know you do your best but you start it and then you have to trust that things will go okay you have to let yourself go in a way to to be able to feel the music but you have to also be very rational in order to handle everything that's happening and then if something happens that you didn't predict then you have the tools to handle it. It's a metaphor for life when it comes to my view of music. I cannot know what's around the corner when it comes to my life, but I hope for the best. I try to do the right things and I know that things will happen and if they happen, when they happen, I will know how to handle them. And it's the same when it comes to music. The aim for the music to be perfect is a good aim to have but realistically it will never be perfect and things will happen and it's not about getting yourself to be perfect it's about getting yourself enough tools to handle a situation when something imperfect happens when you get to the conducting in real time during the performance it's sort of like a trance you get yourself in that state and nothing else exists but you have your algorithm and you have your heart and you have the music that is happening and that's such a privileged place to be in i really had to talk to myself when it comes to that because i was like why do i have to do this i'm not the person to be doing this i should not be the person who does that but i was like well i have the opportunity to do this why am i not willing to take it Many people would want to be in my shoes and I got the opportunity. So I think the difference between this kind of people and that kind of people is taking the opportunity and doing the most of it. Okay, that turned philosophical. I didn't expect that, but I hope you find it helpful. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. If you wish to see more from Inquire to Choir, you can subscribe and that's it. Conduct well, conductors, and I'll see you next time. Bye!